Hi guys, Vince here again with the Tinkerer's Workshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Atlas Universal Compound Vice. Uh, these are also known as XY vices or XY tables and essentially they are designed to mount to the top of a milling machine or a drill press and they feature a vise to hold your workpiece and then a couple of uh, feed screws so that you can move the table in two different directions horizontally in XY axes. Uh, this particular one was made by Atlas but they were also made by other companies. I, I know Mastercraft made a very similar looking version and I believe Palmgren also made made something like this. So. Um, I picked this one up a couple of years ago from a machine shop that was going out of business and at that time the owner said that it had been sitting on a shelf in their shop for years and hadn't been used and it's been sitting in my shop now for a couple of years. Um, I've got a project coming up that I'd like to use it on and so I thought I'd take it apart and clean it up and get it working again. Um, it's, it's in fairly good shape but the controls are really stiff here and this one's a little bit wonky. It, it turns um, freely, it spins, so I think it just needs some adjusting. So I thought I'd take this all apart, um, sort of document the process, get it cleaned up and put it back together and uh, just show how, how it works. Before we start taking it apart, I wanted to take a quick look at this little uh, brochure that I have from Atlas. Uh, this is, I, I'm, there's no date on this, but I'm guessing it's probably from sometime uh, shortly after the Second World War. And I think it was distributed when they first came out with this universal compound vise, presenting a universal compound vise for drill press, shaper, milling machine, lathe, and grinder. And uh, I always loved the graphics that Atlas had on their promotional stuff. They just did a really nice job with the printing, the typography, and the, the line art and stuff. So it's, I, I don't know, I find these things kind of cool. I know uh, most people might just think it's just paper, but uh, I, I just like stuff like this. So anyways, here's a drawing of the uh, compound vise. And then there's a brief description of how it can be used and... Uh, just this first paragraph here, it says that this versatile fixture hand handles all types of accurate indexing, layout, and spacing work, straight lines, radial, circular, and is built rigidly to permit adapting drill presses to light milling operations. And I would stress the word light. Uh, I've seen guys try to turn a drill press into a mill and usually doesn't end well. Uh, I could see possibly using this to do some very light cuts in aluminum or other soft metals or plastics but I certainly wouldn't want to try to uh, adapt a drill press into a mill. Uh, drill presses just aren't made for side thrust, they're made for end thrust when you're drilling but they're not the bearings are not designed to take uh, sideways thrust and a lot of drill presses the chuck is mounted uh, just with a, a Morse taper and if you put any side lateral pressure on the chuck it can cause that taper to work loose and the chuck will just fall out of the drill press so if you're going to use this for any kind of milling you definitely want to have a drill press that has a threaded chuck or a collar on the chuck that holds it in place so that you don't have to worry about the chuck falling out. Um, a few drawings or a few photos rather down here showing uh, different uses for it and they've got it set up on a drill press here and then, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here so that you can see this better. Uh, all kinds of wacky stuff. I don't know how, how well any of this would really work, but they've got it mounted to the table on the drill press with the table tilted. Um, doing some kind of radial milling that looks like a piece of wood, so that might work. Um, and then you could also mount it to a milling machine and the, the table actually swivels 180 degrees, so you can pivot it for angled cuts and things like that. And then here it is shown on a surface grinder. Um, I don't have a surface grinder, so I don't really know if I'd want to do that or not, but according to Atlas, you could do it. So Then on the back here, um, they advertise a, uh, they, a feature that they had of this, this compound vice is that you could buy just the table and the jaws and mount it to the 10 inch atlas lathe. You just remove the 
the uh, compound of the lathe and put this table in place and then you could clamp a workpiece between the jaws and you mount a boring bar in your lathe and that way you could do some kind of internal boring. Um, seems like a pretty specific application to me. I don't know that I would use it for that but I guess if, if the occasion arises where you needed it, it might come in handy. So uh, that's it for the brochure. Uh, let's go back to the table and start taking that apart. There's not a lot to these, so hopefully it'll it'll come apart uh, fairly easily. Uh, we'll start by taking the vise off. This is held on just by a couple of cap screws. And I've had this off recently, so I don't have them on there too tight, but those just slide off. There's a couple of T-slots in the table so that you can adjust those uh, vise parts to any, anywhere you want. These are often missing on these tables so I was really glad to see that uh, whoever had put this one away actually left the vice parts on there because these get taken off and put aside and separated from the rest of the tool so uh, glad to have those. Uh, I've got a little bit of damage here just place where people had someone had drilled holes into the table nothing major so I might try to fill those or may just leave them as they are for now couple of little dings right there but overall it's in pretty decent shape no chips in the t-slots which is nice to see and uh, no no real rust on the top either so that's good so like I was showing you in that brochure uh, this table actually was sold as a separate item if you wanted to mount this on the compound of the 10 inch atlas lathe and it's held on uh, with a couple of cap screws here which can just be let me slide this out of the way here they're just loosened here with a allen wrench and then this whole thing should come off similar to the compound of a lathe there we go there's a couple of uh, tapered pins in there you don't want to lose those because those fit into the dovetailed stub here and, and lock the table in place so make sure that those don't fall out and, and get lost but I'll set that aside for now and we've got a screw here to remove this guard This is the same guard that you'll find on the 10 inch atlas lathe as well. And to remove the top slide, we'll just back this out. He's got dovetailed ways here and there's a gib also to adjust it, but right now it's just really stiff. I'm guessing it just needs to be cleaned out. A lot of gunk in there. comes off. There's the gib. Set that aside. Now to get this top table off, kind of the same thing, just turning this one. And this one's even stiffer. Well, I removed this carriage slide off camera just because it was taking a long time to crank it all the way down to the end but it it just comes uh, just slides off like the uh, first one did and there's a gib there too uh, next step will be to remove these crank handles these are held on just with a nut so I've got to grab a wrench and I'll remove those I just want to show you how these crank handles are mounted on here uh, there's a woodruff key that fits in a little slot in the screw here and that ties into a keyway in the crank handle so essentially you've got to remove the nut from the end uh, just unscrew that the handle pulls off and then you can remove the woodruff key and then there's another nut here that also just threads off just like that 
And then the micrometer dial, uh, it slides off, but it's, it's on there. It's kind of stuck on there pretty tight. So I just have to drive that feed screw off. And then that slides off the end. Um, this should allow you to pull the, let's see if I can pull this out. Just trying to work this feed screw out. There we go. So that slides out that way. Um, there's a screw down here that holds the bronze feed screw nut. So I'll remove that. Hopefully that's not too difficult to... Yeah, it's just spinning on me. So I'm probably gonna have to put that in a vise to remove it. Um, as far as removing this collar, there is a Allen set screw here, which I've already loosened. So I'll back that out and that's in there pretty tight. So I may have to uh, see if I can press that out or see how that comes out. I may not have to take that out actually, if I can just clean it up. It's not really any reason to take it out of there. So I'll take a closer look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these parts all cleaned up. I'll take the feed screw off the other slide and do, you know, do, just follow the same procedure. You can see there's a lot of grime here and then you can see where it's just been sitting for years. So uh, get these kind of cleaned up a bit and um, oiled and we'll put it back together in the uh, second part of this video.